Hey everyone, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy. Today I'm going to be talking about a topic that I promised that I would cover way back, probably over two years ago now, when we were first starting to set up our own servers. And it all stems around players getting kicked out of our server, and the warning that they get is packet flooding player tick. So I'm going to explain exactly what's happening, why it's happening, and what you can do to prevent it. Hey everyone, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy, where I teach you guys the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do a lot of plugin reviews and tutorials to hopefully show you the different things that you can do on your server to create a better experience for your players, or maybe just make life a little bit easier for your admins and moderators. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. I'm like so close to 10,000 subs. So hopefully today is the day that I've earned your subscription. So have you ever been playing on somebody else's server or maybe on your own server and you started banging on a tree and you notice that the red x is showing up like it's supposed to but no wood is actually going into your inventory it seems like you're not actually gathering any resources or same thing if you went over to a stone node and did the same thing you're hitting the stone node but nothing's going into your inventory that's typically caused by your server or the server that you're playing on doesn't necessarily have to be your own is being stalled out or locked up or whatever you want to call it there's a lot of different definitions there's also a lot of different reasons that can cause this to happen and then it's it's usually followed up by all of your players or all of the players on the server getting kicked with this warning that you're seeing on the screen right now. So when this exact situation is happening on your server or the server that you're playing on, there's a multitude of different reasons why a server might be locked up. And then while the server is locked up, the client or the player is still sending information to the server, but it's locked up. So it's not actually processing any of that information, which is why your client seems like they're actually hitting a tree or a stone node, but they're not actually gathering any resources into their inventory. That's because the server is locked up. The client isn't. So the client is speaking. The server is not talking back and responding. You will quite often see this exact same scenario happening while a server is being DDoS attacked. That's not what we're getting into today. Today I'm going to be showing you what the server owner, probably yourself, is actually causing on your server to make this happen. So when everything is running as it's supposed to, this is how Rust life works right here. So we're hitting a tree and we're actually gathering resources into our inventory and we can have a look at our inventory and sure enough, the wood is actually going into our inventory. And I know that it's really small on the screen right now. You don't actually need to see what's actually happening in my server. You just need to be able to understand what's happening when you're actually making this mistake. All right there. So I was able to zoom in a little bit so that you guys can see that better. Not that it actually matters but this is how a properly running server should look you should see your cursor down at the very bottom there not necessarily blinking but as you can see right by my mouse cursor there you can see i've got that white line that's my cursor that means that the server is waiting for me to enter commands or whatever it's just sitting there waiting and if we run commands it will actually process that command like we would expect however if we accidentally or inadvertently click somewhere on this console, and it'll look like this when you do, you'll see a white box where you've clicked. As long as that white box is right there, we've essentially stalled out this server. It's not gonna function. The client will still be able to play, but they won't be able to move things out of their inventory. They won't be able to collect resources. They'll shoot their guns, but it won't actually hit anybody. All of these various things happen to the client side, but it's all simply caused by this little white box right here. And if like, so right now I'm moving this around and this server is locked up it's not functioning it's not doing anything if we hit enter which i'm about to do in a second here it's going to actually kick me out of game you're going to see the server side respond and it's going to give the warning like you're seeing at the top there it says specter kicked packet flooding whatever whatever so it's actually going to do that to me as soon as i hit enter yep there it is so it kicked me out of the game as you can see by my bottom right hand corner there and it gave me a player tick disconnect warning so in most situations when you have this packet flooding warning happening on your server in a local host type scenario, this is the cause for it. And it can happen to anybody. It can happen to the most experienced server owners there are out there. It can happen to anybody. Literally, it happened to me and I lost over 150 players out of my server. They all got kicked for packet flooding. I freaked out. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what caused it. I'll just all of a sudden I lost all of these players and I freaked right out. So it took me a little bit to figure it out. And I have discussed this on previous videos, especially when we're setting up servers. I've talked about this before, 
but I wanted to do a dedicated video because I was recently contacted by somebody that I think is having this exact same situation. So I'm hoping that this video today is actually going to help them out and answer their questions. And for the most part, based on my experience, this only happens in a local host type scenario or in a scenario when you have direct access to the console, just like you see on the screen, because this can happen in a dedicated server type scenario where you're actually using remote desktop to actually log in, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. It's not necessarily just for local hosting. It's basically anytime you have access to this type of server console. So how do you prevent it? How do you make sure that this isn't going to happen to you in the future? Well, as you all know, you're always working in the console. You're always doing something in there and you might not actually be paying attention when you click off of it or something like that and you leave that little white box there. So the best thing that I can suggest you do is every time you're done doing something on your console, just hit enter a couple of times. Yeah, it's going to say command not found, but that's okay. At least you know that the cursor is where it's supposed to be and the console is now waiting for you to enter in commands. It's not hung up. It's not stalled. It's still good to go. And none of your players are going to get kicked out. I've had a couple of different scenarios where I've hung it up for like three or four or five seconds while I'm like, oh crap, I need to fix that before my players start getting kicked out. So for really short periods of time, it's probably okay. Most players won't even notice it. They're just going to blame it on Rust being glitchy because let's face it, Rust is glitchy. So watch for that white box. If your players are complaining that they keep getting kicked out, chances are pretty good that that's what's happening on your server. Just make sure you hit enter a couple of times as you're leaving your console. You won't have this issue. All right. Thanks for watching today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Leave me a great big thumbs up. It helps me out huge with the YouTube algorithm. When you like one of my videos or all of my videos, if you wanted to, it puts my videos in front of other people and it helps get my channel more and more exposure. If you haven't already, make sure you join my discord at discord.srtbull.com. And of course, if you want to monetarily help out my channel, you can check me out at patreon.srtbull.com. All right. Thanks for watching. Remember, I put a brand new video every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you guys all next Friday.